Hey, I'm Scott. This is Motivated by Mountains, and today we're going to talk about all the gear that I used in 2019. Okay, so let's just jump right in. I'm gonna go through all of the gear that I used in 2019. I'm gonna go through the kit that I used for the majority of uh, the three season use. Um, that gear would take me down comfortably to temperatures in the mid teens. Um, and then I'll kind of dive through some other stuff that I have that I kind of rotated out through the warmer parts of the year and the cooler parts of the year, things that I tried throughout the season that I didn't really, uh, didn't really work for me, and uh, just some things that I switched out. So it's kind of a lot to talk about, but I will try and keep it as short and sweet as possible. Obviously, if anybody has any questions about any of this gear, just drop all those questions in the comments or shoot me an email. You can find that information in the description of this video, and I'll be more than happy to try and answer anything and everything that I can. So this is the pack that I used for the majority of last year. I did a couple of videos on this thing already. I did a first look video as well as just recently did a video on why I love this pack so much. So I will throw some links up and you can check those out if you want. I'm not going to go into like a ton of details on this pack, but it's super rad. I love it. And I plan on continuing to hike with it. Uh, for the foreseeable future. So anyway, great pack, 35 liters. Uh, this pack weighs right at 15 ounces. Um, it's got a lot of options on it. So what I'm gonna do is just start unpacking this thing and we'll just go through each piece of gear. So on the outside of the pack, we've got two water bottles. These are just one liter smart water bottles. Nothing fancy. Um, and then, uh, let's see, one of these pockets, I have, uh, some compostable dog poop bags. Um, I'm a big fan of cleaning up trash as I hike. And if I come across something that is super nasty and gnarly that I don't want to necessarily use my hands to pick up, these work really, really well for that. Next time you're out hiking, pick up some trash. That would be cool. This pack has a giant uh, front mesh pocket, super stretchy, which is awesome. Um, so let's go ahead and get into that real quick. This is all things that I like to be able to reach throughout the day. So the first thing is a small piece of car chamois. That's all this is. It's probably I don't know, six inches by six inches, maybe a little bit bigger than that. But um, this is a great way to deal with condensation in your tent, especially if you have a single wall shelter. And these dry super, super fast and they're uh, extremely lightweight. I think this weighs maybe like half an ounce. This is my poop trowel, deuce of spades. Um, I have some duct tape on the edges. If you've ever used one of these, they're great. They're really sturdy. They're super light and they dig really well. The edges uh, that you hold on to are, um, they're kind of sharp. If you just stick a little bit of duct tape on the edge, it takes that away, no problem. And uh, yeah, that works pretty great. So poop trowel. This is a cut off piece of water bottle. Um, it's the really thin, water bottles that you can smash down. This is just to scoop water out of shallow water sources if I need to do that. This guy here, this is an Evernew two liter uh, water bag. This is for um, if I have a dry stretch where I need to carry more than two liters, um, I can use that for, that for that and I also use it to filter my water most of the time. Occasionally, depending on where I hike, um, Sometimes I will not take this and just screw the filter directly onto the bottle. This is the Sawyer Squeeze. Um, this is definitely my preferred water filter. Um, the flow rate's pretty good, it's dependable, and as long as you don't let it freeze in the cold, it works like a champ. And then I've got a 
smart water bottle sport cap um, on the top. Okay, and then I have in the bottom, I've got these straps here that uh, these hook onto the webbing loops on my pack right here. So if I have um, a heavy carry where I have additional food or clothing or water, and it's to the point where I can't hike um, without a hip belt, 99% of the time I'm hiking uh, with no hip belt. Um, these shoulder straps are comfortable enough for me that I can carry a load up to 18 pounds and hike all day and I'm good to go. But if I do have a heavier carry, these, uh, this webbing belt will clip onto here and that's pretty sweet because uh, that way it'll take a little bit of the weight off of my shoulders. Um, my fanny pack that I'm gonna get into in a minute also does attach here so you can wear this like a hip belt and um, that works really well also. So keep those straps in there just in case. Got a uh, uh, racquetball, just an old racquetball that I've had for a long time uh, to roll my feet out or any sore muscles. Um, this is a great thing to have. All right, ditty bag. Move this out of the way. This is a, a Dyneema bag. Keep that on the outside of my pack so I can get to this stuff in here. All right, so just dump all this out. Still need to get a smaller one of these. It's kind of overkill, but it's probably never gonna happen. That's all right. Um, extra cap, smart water bottle cap. Little thing of dental floss. Spare lighter and rubber band. These are uh, sandwich bags, very similar use to the, uh, the dog poop bags. Um, and I keep these with me. There's, there's lots of uses for them. They're great to have. Uh, this is a, a whistle. I can't remember the name of the whistle, but supposedly it's the loudest whistle um, in the world. I keep this with me whenever I hike with my kids. Um, whenever, excuse me, whenever we're in camp and they want to go off and explore, I always make sure that one of them has this whistle around their neck and it has the SOS um, right here in Sharpie. So they know if they get in trouble and they kind of panic and they freak out and they don't remember exactly how to blow this whistle for SOS, they can just look on there and just have dots. I also have my cell number and some contact information. So they, they always have this. That way they're good to go. Earplugs. These are just little foam. I think they're supposed to be disposable earplugs, but um, these are a great thing to have um, to be able to sleep. And I, let me pull a couple more things out and I'll tell you why. Um, obviously that's the block sound. This is an extra uh, O-ring for my water filter in case mine does fall out. It never has. Um, I did put a couple of little drops of super glue on it a couple of years ago but um, I keep this with me just in case it falls out or someone else's falls out. Um, this is uh, antifungal cream, just a little tube of that. This is a really good thing to have. You're gonna be out in the woods for days at a time. Um, you're gonna be sweaty, stinky, and there's definitely the chance that you're gonna get um, some sort of itch, jock itch, or um, maybe uh, whatever it's called on your feet. I can't even remember, but athlete's foot. There you go. That's what it is. Um, this can be a great thing to have. So, and then this is, this is like a little uh, repair slash first aid kit, I suppose is what you would call it. So we'll just dump this stuff out. So Imodium, for diarrhea, just in case, because that is not fun in the woods. Um, this is a couple of aqua tabs in case my water filter does happen to freeze or something happens to it. 
um, just a backup, just a few of those. Um, this is a mix of Advil and then just a couple of Benadryl. So the Benadryl and the earplugs. Um, Sometimes I, I sleep pretty well in the woods, uh, but some of the folks that I hike with, my wife especially, um, sometimes sometimes she has trouble sleeping, and a lot of that has to do with noise. Um, and so we found out on a trip a few years ago in Iceland that there's three things that really are crucial to sleeping with sound and other distractions. There, it never gets dark in the summer, and people are up all times of the night and day just like there's always people doing things so you might have somebody come and throw a tent up right next to you at um, three in the morning and they're acting like it's 12 noon um, so to get through all of that and to make sure that she and other people are able to sleep earplugs to block out the sound a cheap uh, face mask or eye mask i guess is what it is an eye mask cover your eyes to block out the light. I don't carry one of those, but she does in her pack. I just thought I'd mention it. And then Benadryl as like a last resort, you know, take one or two of those and sleep the night away. So anyway, Advil, obviously Advil is for sore muscles and a headache or something like that. Carry a few of those. And then um, I'm not super prone to blisters. Don't have a lot of trouble with that, but same thing, I occasionally have people with me that do get blisters, so I carry, uh, this is athletic tape, specifically this is rock tape, and this stuff is super sticky and flexible, and it will stay on for days and days, even if you um, swim in it, shower in it, whatever, it will stay on. This is good stuff, it's called rock tape. So, uh, let's see. Couple of Pepto Bismol tabs, same thing, just for upset stomach. Um, this is a small piece of Gear Aid tape. This is really good for sleeping pads and things like that. This is a um, swab to clean off your pads, so you can put that on there, and that that's whole kit basically for popped pads. And then this is a needle with a little bit of nylon thread. And then uh, that kind of works with the dental floss for repairs. So that is all of that from the ditty bag. Okay, bottom pocket on this pack. This is my rain jacket. Frog Togs UL2, I believe. Um, this is my Rain jacket of choice. Um, it's really light. It's like five ounces, I think. For a, this is a size medium. Um, real simple rain jacket, but it works well. Uh, I can get a couple of years out of one of these guys. You can do light, light bushwhacking in a jacket like this. But if you're hiking on trail, for the most part, these things hold up really, really well. And um, I just like the simplicity of it. I do wish they had pockets, but um, other than that, super light, inexpensive. Um, they can be recycled, which is super rad. And uh, yeah, I like the frog togs. So that's my rain jacket. And let's see. All right, that's everything on the outside of the pack. Uh, normally I keep snacks and uh, all my food up here for the day, my snacks. And then on this side, I keep uh, a buff, and if it's really cold, I might keep a pair of gloves, but usually I don't have those. Um, the buff, I don't have uh, because I ran with it yesterday, so it is soaking wet. And let's see, let's get into the pack. <clears throat> All right. This is my Appalachian Gear fleece hoodie. Um, this is a great piece of gear. 100% alpaca. I've had this one, this particular 
hoodie. Um, this blue one I've had for several months now. I've hiked in this thing, run in this thing. Um, I've had it soaking in sweat. I can't tell you how many times um, intentionally kind of to see uh, how well the antimicrobial properties of this. And I've never washed this damn thing and it still smells. Yeah, it smells totally fine. It's crazy. Um, it should smell awful and it doesn't. Um, but yeah, super warm, super stretchy. I've got a video on this too. I'll throw a link up, but these things are amazing and killer companies. So check out Appalachian gear company for sure. All right. Uh, food bag, just a Dyneema food bag, roll top. I've had this one for, I don't know, several years. I'm not sure how long. Um, it's a pretty good bag. I think if my wife has the, uh, the light AF food bag and it has the flat bottom, which I think is a little bit better design than, than this bag. This is from Z packs, but, um, it works fine. And let's see, cook kit. Let me just pull all this junk out. So, food bag. These are just uh, some Ziplocs to organize my food. This is my trash bag that I've had for years. Um, dinner, that, these things, this way I can kind of organize my food a little bit. Um, this is a bag that I keep for uh, drink mixes. I keep my toothpaste in here. I have uh, my spoon. Um, they don't make these anymore. This is a GSI spoon. It's got this huge spoon head on it. I wish they still made these because they're awesome. Um, yeah, a few drink mixes I keep in here. This being in my food bag, it's got my toothpaste, so it all goes up when I hang this thing up in a tree. A uh, little tiny bamboo um, toothbrush. It's a kid's toothbrush, actually, but it um, works great. And it's super light. It's like 0.1 ounces or whatever. A little thing of toothpaste. And that's it. There's just a few drink drink things in here and one coffee packet um, and then I have a few fire starters these are um, wet fire uh, these were given to me and they work really well they burn for about five or six minutes they're made by UST which is I don't know what that stands for but they're called wet fire and they look like a dinner mint but um yeah they burn even when they're wet they burn for about five or six minutes and they're super light so this is my light af um dyneema um bear bag bear bagging kit um it's got a little carbon stick in it the simple stick so you can do a PCT hang and tie your clove hitch with that, which is pretty cool. And the cord for hanging up my bear bag. All right, next thing, Z-Packs duplex. Um, this is my preferred shelter uh, for pretty much all of my trips. I also do some, um, some tarp camping and I have another sill nylon shelter that I made um, that I occasionally use. And then I also have uh, a Lunar Solo that is a, that is a killer shelter. Um, definitely should check that out. That's, that's a great shelter, 200 bucks, and it's a lot of room. But overall, Z-Packs Duplex is my preferred shelter of choice, and this is what I use on almost all of my trips. And I use that with my trekking poles that I'll get to in just a second. Uh, let's see, which makes me think, uh-huh, I did miss them. So in my outside pocket, I keep my steaks in that big mesh pocket and I had missed those. So 
Here they are, another Dyneema bag. And I use, oh, it's full of dirt. Um, I use the titanium shepherd hooks. Um, I'm not super careful with these, but I find they hold pretty good uh, unless it's really loose sandy soil and then they don't hold very well at all. So don't use these if it's gonna be super sandy. And then I use these V stakes, titanium V stakes. I don't remember where I got these, but um, they work well and I use those for the two tie outs um, to my trekking poles on my duplex. And then I use the shepherd hooks for everything else. Okay, that's that. Now, okay, so now we're getting into my pack liner, which is a just a um, trash compactor bag, nothing fancy. So inside of there, I have my puffy jacket. This is a like a thirty dollar puffy jacket from TJ Maxx. Um, it works great for me in three season conditions, like I said, with the fleece or not the fleece, the, uh, the alpaca hoodie. And then this puffy, I'm able to go into the teens. Um, and yeah, for 30 some dollars, it's awesome. It's made by a company called 32 Degrees. And they might be a little bit more than $30 if you don't get them from a place like TJ Maxx. That's like a kind of a, not second hand, but discount, a discount clothing store. But it works really well. This is something that I'm considering upgrading um, for this year, but we'll see. Sleeping pad, climate, ultralight SL, I'm pretty sure is what it's called, ultralight V, maybe that's what it is. And they just updated the valve on it this year. They put a much better valve that kind of flips in and out, super easy to blow up um, and deflate. It's got an R value of 4.4 so it's it's pretty warm and it weighs 15 ounces um, and it and it costs around 100 bucks so this is this is like one of my favorite pads because it's really comfortable it's not loud it's not super light but it's not terribly heavy either um, but i feel like it's a really good middle of the road pad for the amount of money so we have a couple of these um, that i use uh, with my family as well as kind of loners to friends. Um, and there are some other pads that I use throughout the year and I'll, I'll get into that in a minute, but check that out. Clothing. This is a uh, head net. Um, that's what I use to store my clothes and obviously I can use it as a head net to prevent bugs from biting the hell out of me. And then I also use it to secure my inflatable pillow onto my sleeping pad. And I also made a video about that. You can check that out. I'll throw a link up for that too. Um, so, so in here I keep one extra uh, t-shirt. This one is a Merino shirt that I've had for years. Um, just something more or less to sleep in something comfortable that I keep dry and relatively clean. Sometimes I'll end up hiking in it too, but I try and keep um, one lightweight shirt to sleep in. Um, these are like $3 cheap fleece women's leggings that I bought from Walmart. Um, these things are crazy warm. And what I did is I just cut the legs off. So I guess they're like leg warmers, but for sleeping, these things are, are awesome. They're like really, really warm and they're very light too. They don't weigh much at all. Uh, one extra pair of socks to sleep in. And these are Nike Pro Combat running tights. Um, I wear these sometimes when it's very cold I'll wear these uh, to hike in, but generally they're more for sleeping um, and, and yeah, for cold weather. So just an extra layer to keep things warm. 
So that is all of those clues. That's my dog. I don't know if you can hear that, but I've got a big hound dog, Copper, and that's him barking. So, all right, close. This is the Catabatic Gear All Sec. Uh, it's a 22 degree quilt. It is legitimately warm to 22 degrees. I would say that's the comfort rating of the quilt. Um, their temperature ratings are definitely conservative. I like this quilt very much. It's very comfortable. Um, it's very warm. It's very light. Uh, the, the quality of it is amazing. Um, yeah, when you hear that catabatic quilts are killer, they are. The pad attachment system is a little, a little tricky. Um, takes some getting used to, and I will say that if there is a negative side to this quilt, it's these clips. Um, when your fingers are really cold, uh, they are kind of difficult to use. Um, it almost hurts to use them with really cold fingers. But I contacted um, Catabatic and I said, hey, can I just use these mitten hooks? Because there's a clip here that clips onto the cord that goes around your pad. And then there's, a, there's like this secondary mitten hook in case you want to draw more of the quilt down flat onto your pad. And I asked him if I could just use the mitten hooks and just tie a, a hitch in the cord on the pad. And they said, yeah, no problem. This won't rip out. So that's what I've been doing. And I just don't use these plastic clips at all. And it works great. So yeah, amazing quilt. Definitely cannot go wrong with catabatic gear. Um, feel like there's something else. Oh yeah, last thing in there. My pillow, nothing crazy. Sea to Summit, uh, Ultralight. I think that's, that's it, that's what it's called. Um, great pillow, super durable. I've had this thing for uh, three years, three or four years. Um, yeah, it's great. Cook kit, that was the last thing I missed. Nothing fancy, Dyneema pot sack. Get this thing out of here. Um, little rag to wipe things up. BRS stove. This is the, you know, super tiny um, $15 stove off of Amazon. There's a bunch of different companies that make it um, un under different names, but I've been using it for a couple of years and it works great for me. Um, obviously you don't want to put a really big pot on top of it with a lot of weight, a lot of water. I think that might bend the arms once they get hot, but for the pot I use, it works fantastic. Lighter and tokes, uh, seven fifty, seven hundred milliliter pot. Yeah, somewhere in that. I can't see it. There's too much blackness on it. Anyway, it's 700 or 750 milliliter, and that's it. That is the gear that I used the majority of the season. Now, there were a few things that I carried when it was warmer and some things that I swapped out and some things that I tried last year that I'm just going to go through really quick. Um, and uh, that way, and kind of give you an idea of some of those thoughts. So, um, actually before I do that, just super quick, this is what I hiked in. Uh, darn tough socks, that's all I wear all the time is darn tough socks. I wear them for everything. Um, trail running, um, the gym, and all of my hiking. Um, they're amazing socks and they're guaranteed for life. So once you buy them, that's it. You bought your socks. You buy like five or six pairs, you got socks for life. So, Nike shorts. I don't know, nothing fancy about them. No liner, um, I don't wear anything under them. Just keep everything easy breezy. Uh, this is 
the Columbia Silver Ridge light. This is the shirt I've been hiking in uh, and, and working in. I'm a landscaper, so I need something to keep the sun off. And these things are great in the heat. Um, been wearing these for a few years now and it's it's a killer shirt so this is the columbia silver ridge light but you have to make sure and get the light the regular silver ridge is not the same shirt so that's what i wear when i hike and i do wear um i don't have them they're also downstairs covered in mud and water from trail running yesterday but i wear dirty girl gaiters uh, to keep everything out of my shoes and then i wear um ultra lone peak fours um big fan of those shoes and so that's that's what i wear when i hike and then i use these trekking poles these are the cascade mountain carbon trekking poles um, you may have heard them also referred to as the costco poles because i think they sold them at costco they're like 40 bucks and they're killer they're very sturdy i've had no issues with them uh, the grips are comfortable yeah they're great so for 40 bucks man you can't beat it all right so this guy the sawyer micro tried this last year don't bother just get the squeeze the regular squeeze don't mess with this thing it's slightly lighter but the flow rates slower and it does okay until you get into some sediment but unless the water's like super clean coming right out of a stream it will clog really fast and continue to clog over and over so don't bother um this is the montbell versalite um, a rain jacket that i hiked with quite a bit last year and used for trail running this is a great jacket. Um, it's kind of expensive. It's very lightweight. It's around five ounces or something like that, I think, somewhere in that range. It has pockets, it has pit zips. It's got a big hood. Um, it's got a lot going for it. My biggest issue that I had with it is it has this really stiff collar and when it's zipped up, not even all the way to the top, but when it's zipped up, you know close to the top it just is all up in your face and it drove me crazy um, and I know that's a that's probably like a silly minor detail a lot of people probably wouldn't be bothered by that at all but it it bugged the hell out of me so I just switched right back to the old frog togs great rain jacket it just did not work out for me these are rain pants when it's very cold out uh, say like if I go on a trip and I know that the temperatures are gonna be say uh, in the teens at night and only getting up into maybe the low 40s at the most during the day then i will take these with me these are cheap from mountain warehouse i think is what the company is called and but they're great they're about four ounces and they slide over my shoes no problem the legs are nice and wide and just simple elastic um, waistband so that's something that i occasionally take this is my rain skirt. This is uh, made by a company called 3FUL. I've had this for several years now. This is my preferred um, item to carry with me when I hike. Um, and it's like seven bucks, I think. Very lightweight and it works like a champ. So it's also great to throw on the ground, um, kind of as a ground sheet to put your stuff on if you want. So rain skirt. And then this guy is the uh, Thermarest Uberlite. Uh, I know a lot of people have had issues with the Uberlite leaking air. Um, I don't know if it's the valve or what, but uh, so far mine has not leaked. Mine has been totally fine. Um, I did pop it once, and I think that was, honestly, I, I'm not sure, but I think it may have been the clips on my catabatic quilt they're kind of pointed on the end and i think maybe i rolled over just a certain way and it somehow punctured the pad i don't know i also had it blown up that night outside of my shelter and maybe i set it down on something it's probably user error probably my fault i don't think it was a fault of the pad 
It seems to be durable enough. It's definitely a very ultralight pad. Um, but in the summertime, um, it's pretty great. I've slept on this down to uh, the low 20s. And at that point, it was definitely starting to get chilly. Um, I slept through the night, but I woke up a few times, you know, doing the, the shift back and forth. So um, I think this thing is probably comfortable to around freezing and then you need to go with something else but it is lightweight and it packs pretty small so it's something to consider i think i think honestly overall with a pad because it's not that much heavier i would just go with the x light um, that's probably gonna work out better for you so and then there's the old z light um I love these things. So in the warmer parts of the year, um, I just carry this guy. It's a torso length um, Z-Lite closed cell phone pad. I've had it for years, super durable. This one's beat all to hell, but I just like the fact that I don't have to blow it up at the end of the day. I just throw it down. It's great in camp because you can just, you know, lean it up against something and you've got like a seat and then a back you can just kind of lounge on it, you know, which is awesome. Um, makes a good windscreen. Um, when I hike with my wife, it's great because we can set it on a log and it's like a couch, you know, it's a giant um, sit pad. So there's just tons of things you can do with it, fan the fire, you know, I mean, I don't know. I just really like these things. Yes, they don't pack all that small, but they fit, you know, right on top of your pack no problem or actually that pack has a strap made on the bottom that works really well for that too so that's my z light and i think man i think that might be it this is a big pile of stuff yeah i think it covered it all so all of this gear like i said um i rotate things in and out so my my base weight for this gear um, runs anywhere like in the warmer part of the year when I'm going to ditch the puffy and I'm going to go with a, a lighter pad and you know I'm going to shift out some things. Um, my base weight is usually a little over seven pounds ranging up to in the colder parts of the year when I'm going to have a heavier sleeping pad and the puffy's going back in there and you know maybe more layers. Then uh, somewhere slightly over nine pounds. So it does fluctuate. Okay, so questions, whatever, like I said, throw them all in the comments and I will answer as much as I can. And yeah, so that's my gear for 2019. I hope you found all of this helpful. And if you did, please hit the like button. Um, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. I will have more videos coming out soon. Once again, my name is Scott, this is Motivated by Mountains, and I will talk to you again soon. See ya. Wow. Now I have to clean all this up.